Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Logic Ops Lab. So today we are going to study about the anatomy of any build or a job. We will take an example of creating a very basic build. So let's get started guys. First of all, open the home page and enter your username and password. Click on sign in and you will have this kind of interface. You can see create a job option over here. Just click on it. It will show you enter an item name. So you can enter your job name over here. I will enter test. It gives you multiple options like freestyle project, pipeline, multi configuration, etc. We will study about that later. Let's start with freestyle project and press OK button. It will give you six options for your build general, source code management, build trigger build environment, build and post build actions. You can click on this or you can scroll through. Let's start with the first one. The general one, we have a description box over here. In this, you'll describe what is your build about. For example, if you are creating an artifact. So you can write create an artifact. Like this, etc, whatever and you can save it. We'll just keep it blank. It gives you a lot of options regarding that. You can see a question mark over here. This is a help for feature. If you want to understand more over it, you can click over it. It will tell you the details. Like this det determines when, if ever, build records for this project should be discarded. Like that. I'm not going to read all of it. If you want, you can go through it. The other option is you can click again to minimize it. GitHub project. So what about this? Is it a GitHub project? Then you have to give the project URL. Now what exactly is GitHub? We'll cover a short video in this tutorial. Not in this tutorial, uh, somewhere in the next tutorials. Let's unselect it. There are multiple options like this build requires lockable resources. This project is parameterized. Let's click it and see what are the options. So if your project is parameterized and it needs parameter while running then you can provide it over here. If you click it over here it will show you that parameters allow you to prompt users for one or more inputs that will be passed in the build. So they have given an example for that as well. Let's move ahead. Disable this project. Let's say this project is running from a long time and you don't need it anymore. You can click on disable this project. Execute concurrent build if necessary. Let's hit it. So when this option is checked, multiple builds of this project may be executed in parallel. Let's move to source code management. Now source code management is one of the best features. It looks for your repository URL. Your repository is a collection of your code. It can be anywhere. Let's say SVN, GitHub or any other facility like Bitbucket or code commit or anything. You have to give the repository over here. So if your repository is public, you do not need to give any credentials. But if it is private in nature, then you have to add somewhere. For example, you have to give the username, the password and ID in description. That's what you have to add. Now, this is the branch. So this branching strategies and the URL part, I'll cover in a video separately dedicated for Git or GitHub. Let's move forward. The third option is build triggers. Now build trigger is an option which tells your build to trigger at any point of time. So these are the five options available over there. So you can trigger build remotely from scripts. You can build after one project is built. Let's say if you are creating a pipeline or dependent projects, you can click it and you give the name of the project. Okay, there are multiple options if that is available, sorry, stable, unstable, etc. Right now we do not have any project, so that's why we are not able to see anything. Build periodically. Now build periodically is very interesting feature. If you click on it, it will show you how you can do it. You need a syntax of cron distributed in five stars with spaces. Now if you click over side, it will translate for you. Do you really mean every minute? So if you want to run it, you can run with every minute by this. Otherwise, you can give an H over here 
or some kind of timing like 5. Now it will translate that would have last run Monday 7th June 2021 9.15 and next will go 9.20 like that. You can manipulate on the basis of this. There is a lot of documentation over here. Minute hour, date of month, the month and the week, the day of the week 0 to 7 is represented. So you can manipulate these values. Let's uncheck it. Other option is GitHub. GitHub hook trigger for Git SCM polling and poll SCM. Poll SCM is again based on the same thing, cron. So what happens is, let's say if you have a chaotic type of environment in which a lot of developers are there and they are building something. Now you will wait for every check-in. You don't have to do that. You can give a schedule and your Jenkins will poll that repository and whatever code is there, it will pull that code and build that. So that's how poll SCM works build environment when you select build environment it has five options as of now delete workspaces when the build starts you can clean your workspaces because you don't want everything to be in your uh, agent or wherever the build is running because it can pile up a pile up with a lot of code and you do not want that after let's say your code is like 1 gb and after 10 builds it will be 10 gb so you don't want to take that unnecessary space you can delete the workspace you can use secret keys or text files with the form of bindings. There can be more options and less options based on the plugins that you have installed in your Jenkins. What is, is exactly a plugin? We'll talk about that later. About if the build is stuck. For example, your build has to run within 5 minutes and it has taken 30 minutes. That means there is something wrong and you need to address it. So you can abort the build if it's stuck by giving the timeout minutes. Add timestamp to the console output. What is console output? We'll take a look later. Basically, console output is kind of a output of whatever is happening with your build. With and, and is an, a, a, new, a type of a tool just like uh, your Maven. Fifth option is build. If you want to add a build, skip, build step, you can use these options. Again, I'm saying they might differ based on the number of plugins that you have installed. For example, you have a Windows environment. Click on this, give a window command, echo, hello. And then you can give a dev, it'll run, it'll echo this and it'll show you the directory, whatever is there in that folder, wherever this build is running. So this is only batch command. If you want to know about more about, if you want to know more about batch commands, I have a tutorial for that. You can follow that from my channel. In case you have a Linux environment, you can execute the shell command as well. You can do a sh and you can run any kind of build. Let's say you have a hello.sh file over there, you can run that. So these are the things available. We'll talk about that later as well. At the end, you can talk about post build actions. A post build action is something that you want to happen after your build. One of the most used feature is email notification. What is an email notification? For example, your build is passed or failed, you will get an email notification. A lot of companies has DevOps teams, so they create a distribution. What exactly is a distribution? For example, your team name is Meridian. So what you will do is Meridian at, at rate your company name dot com. And in that distribution, all the email IDs of your DevOps team will be there. So you can add a distribution over there and then they will receive a mail. You can add an SMTP server for yourself and club it with your Jenkins. That is also available. Let's cut this. One more thing is archiving the artifact. For example, you're using a Java based application and it can produce any kind of file. Jar file, your Java archive, WAR, the web archive, AIR, the enterprise archive. You can archive that uh, artifact and any developer who has the access can download that and check whether the code he has built or he has just entered is there or not. So that's one of the things. There are a number of things that are available over here and we'll talk about one by one later. So that's a basic anatomy of how to create a build. Let's just save it and you can see that your project test is created. You can build it by clicking it over here and see the results on console output. So thanks guys. I hope you have understood everything. If not, 
please feel free to comment below and we'll address the issue so thanks again and i'll see you in the next video